Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Roadrunner Sports. And today we're taking a look at the 30th edition of the A6 Gel Cayano. And we're compared to last year's version, the 29, to see what changed. We'll also bring in the A6 Gel Nimbus 25, as there are some similarities I think we'll want to talk about. What's wrong with it? Now, before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video, and this file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. The Kiano came out in 1993, and here we are 30 iterations later with the Gel Kiano 30. It's completely redesigned from head to toe compared to the 29, and if you're confused by all the different running shoes in A6 lineup, you're not alone. The Kiano is their Max Cushion Stability Daily Trainer. If you want the neutral version, that is where the Gel Nimbus comes in. This is their neutral max cushion trainer. And if you want stability from A6, but don't want this much stack height, you can go to something like the GT2000 version 11. And then the stability version of the GT2000 is basically gonna be the Gel Cumulus here in the corner, which does have a ton of stack height as well. So that kind of gives you the high level overview of the A6 running shoe lineup. The Kyano cost $160 and did gain a little bit of weight. We now come in at 10.7 ounces versus the 10.5 from last year. As far as stack height goes, we get four more millimeters making this an insanely cushioned shoe. 40 millimeters in the heel, 30 in the forefoot for that same 10 millimeter drop. And just as a side note, A6 sent me a 12 and a half for the 29 and a 13 for the 30. So that's why the sizing is a little bit different, but they're close enough to make this comparison here. And if we bring in the Nimbus, which is basically the neutral counterpart, it comes in at 10.3 ounces, has a 41 and a half in the heel and 33 and a half in the forefoot. So you do get a bit more stack height and it does come in a bit less, which makes sense just because there's gonna be a little bit less components and the neutral shoe versus the stability shoe, which is what the Keanu is. Moving on to the upper, A6 decided to go with a more traditional engineered mesh, which does help the breathability, especially when compared to last year's version with its rather warm knit-like material. It's very comfortable, but not the most breathable. And while the 30 does have a more breathable upper, it's not the most breathable material I've ever used. It feels kind of like a more traditional running shoe upper, if you will, and feels very much like a traditional A6 experience. A lot of premium materials, a very comfortable and a secure lockdown. I will say it does fit true to size and is rather secure. My foot was rather connected to this platform, which I think is incredibly important for a stability shoe. Moving on to the tongue, the padding is about the same as the 29. However, we do have a big change. The tongue is now gusseted with pieces of basically engineered mesh or material securing it on both the lateral and medial side to keep it in place. Moving to the back of the shoe, both the 29 and the 30 have very similar levels of padding. I'd say maybe the 30 has maybe it's just a smidge more cushioning back here, but otherwise they feel rather similar. The big difference though is the heel counter. The 30, incredibly stiff, same thing can be said for the 29. However, the 29 has a plastic heel clip along the base, which gives it a bit more rigidity when compared to the 30. And we'll get into all the different stability mechanisms here in a second. Moving on to the midsole, A6 completely redesigned the experience from heel to toe. We now have full length Flight Foam Blast Plus Eco, which is a more sustainable version of FF Blast Plus. Last year, it was just partial Flight Foam Blast Plus, and then they had some firmer foam as you got back towards the heel area to give it a bit more stability. They also changed up the gel technology. We saw the same thing with the Cumulus, the Nimbus, and now here at the Kayano. They added Pure Gel, so a small bit of gel that sits directly underneath your heel. Supposedly, this gel is 40% softer than the old gel that we could see on the lateral edge of the heel, and I think there was some directly under your forefoot as well. Now you can't necessarily feel it directly when you're in the shoe, but supposedly it helps with overall shock absorption. So they're kind of going with this new pure gel technology, which I think makes a bit more sense than having it on the outer edge of the heel, which I think was a bit dated. This is where things start to get very interesting. It's as if ASICS took the rule book, threw it out the window and said, hey, we want to do stability in a completely different way. And that's kind of what you get here with the Kano 30. Last year, we had something called 3D space construction, basically geometric shapes in the midsole that collapse in a certain way to help with stability. They had a plastic heel clip to give you even more guidance, different density foams, Flight Foam Blast Plus, and a more firm foam, and then also light truss with some additional rubber through the medial side to help keep it from twisting. So a whole lot going on with the 29, and then just said, hey, let's simplify it, let's change it up a bit, and let's come up with a new system, which they are proudly calling 4D guidance system. So let's get into it. As the name implies, there are four components to the 4D guidance system. Very creative name there, ASICS. 
The first is the larger heel area. This helps with transitions and just gives you a larger section to land on if you happen to heel strike. The next component is the widened base. You have an incredibly wide platform to land on here, giving you some inherent stability with flat waisted geometry. This gives you just a ton of surface area to land on while you're running, which kind of pairs nicely again with that increased larger heel section as well. The third component is a sculpted midsole. Stability shoes are designed to keep you from overpronating or rolling inwards. So to kind of counteract that or balance that, they added some cutouts and sculpting to the lateral side of the midsole that allow for easier compression. And then if you look on the medial side, it's much more smooth and consistent. So the lateral side of the shoe is a bit softer, collapses a bit easier to give you even more stability to keep you from over pronating or rolling inwards. And the last component to the 4D guidance system, and I will say this is rather unique, is some arch support. Now, if you're a fan of running shoes, you're probably saying, hey, we've seen this before. It's like a medial post or just a medial arch. It's just a firm brick of foam that keeps your foot from rolling inwards. And you would be wrong. That's what we saw last year. The white foam here on the medial side was incredibly firm, kept your foot from again rolling inwards. Now what's different here is this kind of greenish gray foam, whatever color you want to call it, is actually really soft and bouncy. It's kind of a springier foam, it's a bit more dense, and it's supposed to keep your foot from rolling inwards. So it's not a super firm brick-like foam, it's actually rather soft and bouncy. It's supposed to give you kind of a spring back effect, giving you some support on the medial side. It is rather interesting, and I will say this is a very unique implementation for a stability shoe. There are a couple things that do give stability to the shoe that are not part of the 4D guidance system, as ASICS loves to brand everything, and I'm surprised they didn't brand these additional things. The first thing is you kind of have some mini foam sidewalls on the lateral and medial side, just kind of helps you sink lower into the midsole, giving you just even more stability as it helps you connect to that extremely large platform. And the last thing, like we talked about before, is the incredibly stiff heel counter. This helps you make sure your ankle isn't rolling excessively towards the inside and helps you kind of take advantage of all those stability mechanisms that we talked about before. So you have the 4D guidance system and then some of those other just kind of more traditional stability features that most other support shoes have. So with all these upgrades and changes, how does the new Kyano 30 feel? Well, it is completely different. Doesn't feel anything like its predecessors and definitely different than the 29. This is a very unique experience for a stability shoe. I don't think I've had a stability shoe that felt this soft, plush, and bouncy, if you will. I will say it does feel noticeably bulkier, mainly because the volume to the midsole is just huge. It's a massive shoe, and yes, it's only four more millimeters of stack height, but it's also significantly wider and just thicker overall in general. They just added, it seems like, more foam in every direction that they could. When it comes to the stability, I'm actually going to say the 29 is the more stable option. Now, before we go down this rabbit hole, I don't think one is better than the other. They are just different and really depends on the running that you're doing and your running style. But if I had to pick which one is more stable, I think it's 29 and it makes sense the more you think about it. Here in the 30, it's thicker, it's softer, it's taller. And taking a look here again at the 29, you have the more firm base towards the back of the shoe. You have a true kind of medial post and you have the light truss system kind of going through the midfoot. Uh, on the medial side. I do think this gives you a more stable ride and it is a, a, th a thinner shoe with less stack height and all those things just make for a more inherently stable experience. Now that's not to say that this new version is not stable. I just think it's just a tad less stable and just has a lot more going on here with one of the thickest stability running shoe setups I have ever seen. However, the Kyano 30 is going to be the more comfortable, more plush and bouncier option with its thicker Flight Foam Blast Plus Missile, which again runs from heel to toe, very enjoyable and is very unique for a stability shoe. I will say because of the larger volume and the immense amount of ground contact, it is going to be a little bit hard to pick up the pace in. I think the 29 is going to be a bit faster. You do have the very noticeable rocker geometry, which I think helps quite a bit with the larger platform, but it was a bit difficult to kind of get going here with this thicker, larger shoe. I will say it's nice to see A6 kind of go in this direction for a stability option. Most of the times you kind of get firmer, kind of clunkier options for stability running shoes, and that's not the case here. If you want something a bit more traditional or even more stable, I think you take a look at something like the GT2000, which does have that medial post and some more traditional um, stability mechanisms. But other than that, if you're a stability runner who wants a lot of cushion for the push-in or wants to have kind of a slightly more fun, more enjoyable running shoe, I think that's where the Kyano 30 comes in. And as a fun experiment, I also tried on the Nimbus, 
while wearing the Kayana just to see what the differences are. You have a Max Cushion Neutral shoe here and then a Max Cushion Stability shoe, but the lines are getting kind of blurred, especially with this new kind of stability mechanism that Asics has brought in. Now, when comparing these two shoes, the Nimbus absolutely felt like the thicker, more plush option. It has roughly two more millimeters of stack height in the heel and roughly four more millimeters in the forefoot. It's also a little bit lighter, I think coming in at like 10.3 ounces compared to the 10.7 here on a Kayano 30. I will say though, these shoes are not miles apart and it's actually kind of fun to try on one each foot because you can start to feel all those stability mechanisms that ASICS has incorporated really shine through. I'm still standing by my fact that I think last year's version is a bit more stable um, and this is not like a super max stability shoe, but they absolutely work and do give you stability in keeping your foot from rolling to the inside, especially when you try on the Nimbus, which doesn't have any of those um, different mechanisms or guidance systems built into the midsole itself, other than probably the, the really wide outsole. But with that being said, it's kind of nice to see A6 create a max cushion or really fun stability shoe. So if you want the Nimbus or you felt like the Nimbus was too unruly for you, I think the Kayano is going to be a nice option that isn't too far away from the Nimbus 25 experience. Moving on to the outsole, we do have plenty of full thick rubber coverage here. The heel rubber is going to be a bit more durable with that high abrasion or AHAR plus as A6 calls it. The medial side does have some additional rubber that goes through. The shoe does not want to twist or bend that much. It's a rather stiff option and stiff shoe. So that does help even more with the stability. I think I forgot to mention that when going through all the stability features, but this is a rather stiff, rigid option, even with those flex screws in the forefoot. Grip works well. You have plenty of rubber out here, and this should be a rather durable daily trainer for those that need it. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this new direction that ASICS is going with, with its very traditional, very popular Kayano line. I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.